to be here today. I hope you are also very excited. And you know, I'm really excited because we are in the month of December. Yes! And it tells me that Christmas is just around the corner. I'm so happy. So today, we are going to be learning about the hope of Christmas. Yes! Auntie Annie will be teaching us about it very soon. But before then, Let's go through our memory verse for today. Yes. Our memory verse is from the New Testament in the Bible. And it's from Luke. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Say it after me. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Again. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. And 11. Now what does it say? Let's read it together. Luke chapter 2 verse 10 and 11. It says, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now we'll take it bit by bit so that we can all memorize it, okay? Don't worry. So let's start again. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. And the angel...
angel said to them, and the angel said to them, before we continue, do you know who an angel is? Yes. Angels are messengers from God. God used, sends them to give us messages. So, and the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Do you know what the city of David is or where the city of David is? The city of David is Jerusalem. That's, they called it the city of David. And what about a Savior? Do you know who a Savior is? Jesus Christ is our Savior because he saves us from our sins. So anyone that saves us is called a Savior. So in this case, we are referring to Jesus Christ who saves us from our sins. So now let's start all over again. Say after me, Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Again, Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Say it again. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. And the angel said to them, and the angel said to them, again, and the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born. Again, for unto you is born. Again, for unto you is born this day in the city of David. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. A savior who is Christ the Lord. A savior who is Christ the Lord. Luke chapter 2 verse 10 and 11. So I hope you'll be practicing this throughout the week. Promise me that you'll be practicing it throughout the week because next week we'll come and learn it again. And next week we'll go through some exciting exercises, okay?
Hello there. It's the Christmas quiz show. And I'm your quiz mistress, Auntie Hadija. Today, we're going to test whether we know the true meaning of Christmas. Here are the rules for the quiz. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray that as we go through these questions, you would help us to understand what it means to be your child and what Christmas means. Please teach us and help us to understand this in Jesus' name. Amen. Great. You can see I'm all set. Now, here are the rules for the quiz. Our quiz will be in three rounds. The first part will be made up of a series of questions which will require you to choose the correct answer. The second round is a spot, the difference, and some anagrams. The third part, you have a salvation challenge. Each part is going to show you some key verses and you're encouraged to read those verses before you attempt the questions. Are you ready for round one? Here we go. Remember, a correct answer attracts five points. Now, to the first question. We're going to start with God's first promise of a savior. Can we have the verses, please? Listen carefully because we're going to have our first set of questions. Question one. God first promised a savior in the very first book of the Bible. What's that book? The clock is ticking. You're right. The answer is Genesis. Good job. Question two. Whose disobedience brought sin and death into God's very good creation. Is it A, Satan's sin, B, the serpent's sin, or C, Adam and Eve's sin? The clock is ticking again. You're right. The correct answer is C, Adam and Eve's sin. Question number three. When God promised that the offspring of Eve would bruise Satan's head, what did that mean? What would the Savior do? Is it A, he would tie Satan's head? B, he would release Satan? Or C, he would destroy or defeat Satan? What's the correct answer? You're right. He would destroy and defeat Satan. Good. We're moving on. Now, about 2,000 years later, God made some amazing promises to a man named Abraham. One of those promises was that a descendant of Abraham would one day bless all the families of the earth. That means all people. Now to question four. Who do you think that descendant of Abraham was? Is it A, Jehoachim, B, Jeroboam, or C, Jesus? You got that one too. The correct answer is Jesus. The quiz mistress is here. We're going to have the next set of verses. Can we have the verses, please? Good. This is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 to 13. We're going to see what God promised David about the coming Savior. Question 5. Who do you think the scripture is talking about that could have a kingdom like that, which is described in 2 Samuel 7? 
7, verse 12, and 13. Who is the scripture talking about from the verses you have read? Is it A, Solomon? Is it B, Nebuchadnezzar? Or C, Jesus? The correct answer is C. The Bible tells us that Jesus would have a kingdom that would be on forever and ever. No end. Good. From reading the true story in the Old Testament, we learn that God had promised a savior way back in Genesis. Then he told Abraham and David that the savior will come from their descendants. So now, we know which family Jesus will be born into. But what would the savior be like? God told his prophets many things about the savior. We're going to find that in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And that brings us to question 6. One of the prophets God spoke to was Zechariah, who in Zechariah 9, verse 9, does the verse say was coming to them? Is it A, your king, B, your servant, or C, your enemy? Who is the verse talking about? You got that right. Your king. Yes, this prophecy said that the king was coming. Question seven. What three things was this king like from the scripture? What three things was this king like? Can you mention them from the verse? The first one is that he will be righteous. The second, he will have salvation. And the third, he will be humble. Awesome. Good job. Now, we're moving on to question eight. And we're going to look at another prophet in the Old Testament that God gave. A prophecy to him in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Can we have the verse please? Question eight, it's coming. What sign did the Lord promise to give? Is it A, a loud bell with sound in the skies? Or B, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son? Or C, the wind will blow on the trees? What was the sign? I know you got that. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son. That is question eight for you. Bonus question coming up. Are you ready? We'll take the bonus question and then we'll go for a commercial break. Question nine. What would his name be, this king? What would be his name? Is it A, Emmanuel? B, Ebenezer? Or C, Ezekiel? Bonus question. The correct answer is A, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. So this promise meant that a son born of a virgin would be the son of God. Let's take a break now. See you soon.
Welcome back to the second round of questions. Now, we're going to have spot the difference. You see a picture pop up on your screen, and you are supposed to identify as many things you can find that are different from each picture. The more, the better. Ready? Go. All right. So how many differences can you spot from these two pictures that reminds us about when the shepherds went to see baby Jesus when he was born? We can look at the manger. Hmm, what can we see? How about the animals that were in, this, in the manger where Jesus was laid? Mm -hmm. How about the clothes they're wearing? Can you find something on the manger that is not in one? All right, so let's take a look at it together and see how many you're able to spot. Wow, so many of them. So we see a cross that is on the manger. We see that the animals too were changed. And we see that the clothes that in, is in the picture is also different. Good job. I'm sure you were able to identify some of the missing images in the first one and the second one. Very good. All right, how many were you able to get? I see more than 10. If you were able to get that, then you have earned yourself five more points. And that brings us to the last set of questions, which is the salvation challenge. In this final round, you get 10 points for correctly showing a friend the way to heaven. Before I give you the challenge, tell me, does Jesus' death and resurrection mean that everyone will go to heaven when they die? Hmm, no. Sadly, not everyone will go to heaven. What Jesus did for us, coming to die, being born and rising again, is a gift that he gives all of us, even this Christmas. Now, you ready for this challenge? This is it. If your friend at school came up to you and says, you know, that Sunday school lesson you were telling us, I know I didn't want to listen at first, but now I want to listen. Please tell me more. What should I do to get this wonderful Christmas gift? How can I get to heaven? What would you say to your friend? The answer is as simple as A, B, C. You have 60 seconds to write your answer down. Go.
correct for another 10 points. If you were able to do that, give yourself a very big cheers. Yeah, yeah. Good. Jesus told us that those who are truly sorry for their sins and believe in him and believe that he was born, he came to die for us, then they would have eternal life. We know that God is holy and perfect. He hates sin. We deserve punishment for breaking God's rules and doing wrong, naughty things. But because of God's love to us, we can be forgiven. We just have to ask. So, what have we learned today? As you can see from the screen, you can see that God made a promise to Abraham that in him all the families of the earth will be blessed. We've also learned that God promised David that his offspring will be a king who will reign forever. We've also heard that Jesus was born by the Virgin Mary and God said his kingdom will have no end. Anyone who believes in him would have eternal life, will live with Jesus forever and ever and ever. Now, we've come to the end of the Christmas show quiz, where we get to test whether we know the true meaning of Christmas. You all did well. Until we come your way again, remember that the true meaning of Christmas is that Jesus came to give us hope, hope of being united with God again and to live with him forever. Have you made Jesus your friend? Have you shared this gift with your friend? If you haven't, then Christmas gives you, gives you the opportunity to do so. This has been your quiz mistress, Aunt Adija. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>
and his name shall be called, is it A, Emmanuel, Ebenezer, or Ezekiel? What would be the name of the son that will be born to us? You're right. It's Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. God is with us. And that's why Jesus came to tell us that God is with us and he wants us to be with him also. Let's look at this verse. I want you to look at this verse from your Bible. Luke 1, 26 to 33. So give you a few minutes to go through the verse. All right. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God would give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Also, so let's look at these questions to see whether we can answer some of the questions based on this verse. According to the verse that we read, which family did Joseph, who was the earthly father of Jesus, which family did he come from? Is it from the house of David or from the house of Daniel or from the house of Darius? You're right. Jesus' earthly father, who was Joseph, the Bible tells us that he came from the house of David, he was part of David's family. And that confirms what the Bible tells us in Luke. That Jesus would come from the line of David, just as God promised. Good. Our second question is that, and Jehovah told Mary she would have a son who would be named Jesus. Jesus would be great and called what? He'd be called the father of the most high when he is born, or he'll be called the son of the most high. Or you be called the brother of the most high. Oh, Jesus be called. Good. Jesus will be called the son of the most high God. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Jesus Christ was born. He came from the line of David, just as the Bible tells us. And the Bible also tells us that he will be called the son of the most high. Wonderful. How long would Jesus' kingdom last according to the verse? Would it be 2,000 years? Or as long as we like? Or forever? It would have no end. Is Jesus' kingdom like other kingdoms? No. Jesus' kingdom would last forever and ever, just as the Bible has prophesied, just as we have been told in the Bible. Jesus' kingdom is not like earthly kingdoms, but his will last forever. So from this picture, what do we see? What does this picture tell us about the birth of Jesus, about why we celebrate Christmas? What does it remind us of? See Abraham in the picture. You see David, a picture of David. And we also see Mary here. Hmm. So we see that just as God promised Abraham, that in him all the families of the earth will be blessed. Yes, it came to pass. Anyone who believes in Jesus also receives that blessing. So it confirms what the Bible tells us. Jesus Christ came so that we will all be blessed and we'll all be able to go back to God through him. And also we see that God 
promised, God promised that he was going to let Jesus come through the line of David. And he was going to let Jesus have an everlasting kingdom. So just as the Bible tells us, Jesus was an offspring of David, whose kingdom would never end. This confirms what the Bible promised, what God promised through his word. And also we see that just as Isaiah prophesied, that there will be a virgin called Mary who would have a son. His name will be Jesus. And his name will be called Emmanuel, will be called the son of the most high God. All of these reminds us, brings us hope that God is faithful. God is able to keep his word. And God loves us. He wants us to reconcile with him. Anyone who believes in him and his savior, and the Savior that he has sent to us through Jesus Christ will be blessed, will be saved, just as he has promised. Good. Hello, children. Welcome to today's craft. By now, you all have this that I have in my hands. Do you all have it? Mommy or daddy would have printed it for you. Do you see the artwork in there? We are coming to color it. And then when we have finished, we would have formed some words. And I will tell you what we will do after that, okay? So now I have my colors here. You all get your crayons or colored pencils out. We are coming to start coloring. I first picked an orange crayon because that's what I want to use. But you can use any color of your choice, okay? And you follow the lines that the shapes provide. Color within. I think I want to try this color, color blue. And next I have my purple color. I want my coloring to be very bright. You try whichever color you want and let's see what beautiful thing you come out with, okay? Keep coloring, you are all doing so well. Wow, I like what is coming up. I formed S already. Mm. Continue coloring, and by the time you are done, this is what I have. Very beautiful and colorful, isn't it? Can you read the words are formed? Yes. Do you see Savior and hope? Savior and hope. Now, if you look below, you will see some missing words. That we need to fill. 
Now let's fill it with our new words that we've colored, savior and hope. If you do it very well, your sentence will read, Jesus is the savior who brings hope to the world. Jesus is the savior who brings hope to the world. Wonderful. I want you all to do this. And after you've done, on the other side of the paper, you see your memory verse with missing letters as well. And just as Auntie Rachel taught you the memory verse, I want you to fill the missing spaces with those words too, so that you can memorize it each time and you, when I ask you to say it the next time, you'll be able to say it, okay? All right, so now that brings us to the end of our craft for this week. Until next week, same time, be good boys and girls. Bye-bye.